SLT Fiber and experience the power of fiber technology. Sri Lanka's only super fast internet connection. SLT Fiber. Call 1212 now. Good evening. In your headlines tonight, tax bonanza. Government announces major tax relief following maiden cabinet meeting with VAT slashed to 8%. Be mindful. President warns new state and deputy ministers to be mindful of responsibility rather than privilege. High praise. Indian High Commissioner to Sri Lanka calls the island nation's elections a festival of democracy and urges for stronger ties. Our bonds of friendship are natural, mutual, spiritual and eternal. All this and much more coming up tonight on First at Nine, this Wednesday, the 27th of November 2019. PC cut winner. Anti-germ mouthwash samaging and a close-up gel lekker. Story ek start karanna. Hi. Hi. From Adha Derana, this is Adha Derana First at Nine, live from Studio 24 in Colombo. A very good evening and a warm welcome to First at Nine, bringing to you news from across Sri Lanka and around the world tonight. I'm Indivari Amwatha. Following the maiden cabinet meeting of the interim government of President Gotabe Rajapaksa, newly appointed co-cabinet spokesperson Minister Bandula Gurawadana outlined a host of tax relief measures at the first cabinet meeting briefing today. Minister Gunawadana announced that the cabinet has unanimously approved the removal of nation building tax, pay as you earn tax, and withholding tax on interest, a move that is seen by many as a positive one towards much needed public economic relief. However, the single most significant public relief measure from amongst the many announced today remain the measure of to reduce value-added tax from 15% to 8%. Co-Cabinet spokesman Mr. Bandula Gunavadana hosted the first Cabinet media briefing of the new interim government today, announcing a host of much-awaited tax and economic relief measures approved by the Cabinet in line with the President's election promises. Significant among these were the Cabinet's decision to do away with nation-building tax, pay-as-you-earn tax, withholding tax on interest, and the reduction of value-added tax to 8%, from 15%. Minister Gunawadana stated that the focus of these measures is to free the public from unnecessarily high tax burdens. Vishala Sahana Pakedia, Atigar Janadipati Gota by Rajapaksa Metuma Visin Yojanakal, Mudala Mate, Agra Mate, Mind Rajapaksa Metuma Visin, Yojana Siel, Kriatma Kirimat, Kadinami, Gasset Nimedena, Anapana Sanso de Nekirim, Aram Bueno, Gruasta Nishpadana Sanda Aikaran. Jatiya Godinagi me bad, Artika Seva Gastu, Benkuha, Mule Ayatana Baling Ayakarn Harabad, Upenavita Ayakarn Adayam Badu, Upenavita Givin Sandhavin Adayam Badu, Puli Mata Ayakarn Vivida Varge Randum Badu, Nai Seva Badukina Badu Varga Sial, Vama Kriat Makavana Paradi, Aho Sikaranta, Tirane Karla Tibeno. Mewana vite ayakar minti ena siat apa halu ke wet badda siat ata dakwa wah kriyat mak wena paridi wet badda pahat elanu dedas dana miai dolai palaveni dehina. Itu kor dah hatta tamai ata kat aduin. Dewanu a dasar laksya thano eka pirawatu mati ena ayatna walin tamai wet badda ayakali. Ya palaveni dah sita million a visi pahakat a wedi nam pamanai wet badda ta ata tuin. Indi kini me citer sanda ayakar nada ayam badh siat visi ate siat siat dah atar dakwa pat elant tin du kalla tin. Mana ma agamik siddha sthane ayak mat ayakar n selum badu arga valin punne ayatna agamik istan nidas kalla tin beno. Sri Lanka kyo winat one maratak kumanoh urtiya serva wak sapela labagi nen selum ada ayang sampurne badeng nidas kalla tin beno. Siat visi pahking viduri sandesa badh. Adukan lagi. Sulu perisak gaging miri kala 
බලාත්කාරයෙන් බදු ගන්නවට වඩා මේ නිදාස්ත්‍රික ලබා දීම තුලින් ලංකාවේ සියලු ක්ෂේත්‍රවල පිබිදීමක් අලුතෙන් ඇති වෙනවා එතකොට නිෂ්පාදනයේ විශාල ලෙස පළල් වෙච්චාම ලබන වර්ෂයේදී බදු ආදායම ඉහළ යනවා සුළු පිරිසකගෙන් වැඩි බදු ප්‍රතිශතයක් අය කරනවට වඩා වැඩි පිරිසකගෙන් අඩු බදු ප්‍රතිශතයක් අය කිරීමෙන් රජයට ලැබෙන අය බාරය වැඩි වෙනවා බදු පදනම කරන්ට අවස්ථාවක් මේ තුලින් ලැබෙනවා දෙවනුව රටේ බදු නොවන ආදායම තියෙන 15ට අනාගත අයවැලේ කරන වලින් බලාපොරොත්තු වෙනවා මහජනය මත බදු බර පටවන් නැතුව බදු නොවන ආදායම වර්ධනය කරලා ඒ තුලිනුත් රජයේ ආදායම් වැඩි කරගන්න තුන්වෙනි විකල්ප ක්‍රියා මාර්ගය තමයි මේ වන විට අනවශ්‍ය නාස්තිකාර අපතේ යන වියදම් අඩු කිරීම ආදායම වැඩි වෙනවටත් වඩා වැඩි වේගයකින් වියදම අඩු කරගන්න පුළුවන් නම් අයවැය පරතරය අඩු වෙනවා ජෙල් සීන් ඇක්ෂන් ඇන්ටිජර් මවුත් වොෂ් සමගින් ඉන් අ ක්ලෝස් අප් ජෙල් එක ස්ටෝරි එක ස්ටාර්ට් කරන්න with the new interim government having taken office on the 22nd of this month a further 35 state and 3 deputy ministers to courts before president gotabe rajapaksa and prime minister mahinda rajapaksa today at the presidential secretariat addressing the gathering president rajapaksa advised the ministers to consider their positions a responsibility instead of a privilege and strive to encourage and motivate the officials and staff under their purview to provide an improved service standard to the public a total of 35 state ministers and three deputy ministers took oath this morning before president gotabe rajapaksa and prime minister mahinda rajapaksa podu divuruma sada gauravena aradhana karana Starting off the proceedings, Cabinet Minister of Marvel Development, Agriculture and Trade, Chamal Rajapaksa, took oaths as State Minister of Defence, followed by MP Vasudeva Nanyakara, who took his oaths as State Minister for Water Supply Facilities. MP Gamini Lokuge then took oaths as State Minister for Urban Development. MP Mahinda Yapabe Vardhana took oaths as State Minister for Irrigation and Rural Development, followed by MP SP Desanayaka as State Minister for Land and Land Development. MP WDJ Saniviratna took oaths as State Minister of Economic and Policy Development, followed by MP Mind the Summer Singer as State Minister of Public Administration and Internal Affairs. MP CB Ratnayaka then took oaths as State Minister of Railway Services, followed by MP Lakshman Yapabe Vardhana as State Minister of Information and Communication Technology. MP Susant Punchinilame took oaths as State Minister of Small and Medium Enterprise Development, followed by MP Anurupri Darshini Appa as State Minister of Internal Trade and Consumer Welfare. MP Susil Prema Jayanta took oaths as State Minister of International Cooperation while MP Priyanka Rajayaratna took oaths as State Minister of Indigenous Medicine. MP Ranjit Sembala Pitiya was sworn in as State Minister of Education Services while Mind Ananda Lutkamage took oaths as State Minister of Power. MP Dumenda Desanayaka took oaths as State Minister of Youth Affairs while Rohit Abegunaradhana as State Minister of Energy. MP Dasiri Jayasekara was sworn in as State Minister of Industries while well, MP Lasanta Alagiawanna took oaths as State Minister of Public Management and Accounting. MP Kelly Rambukwella took oaths as State Minister of Investment Promotions and MP Arundika Fernando as State Minister of Tourism. MP Tilanga Sumathipala was sworn in as State Minister of Technology and Innovations and MP Mohan Priyadarshana De Silva as State Minister of Human Rights and Legal Reforms. <laughs> MP Vijitha Berugoda then took oaths as State Minister of Women and Child Affairs while well, MP Roshan Rana Singha was sworn in as State Minister of Marvel Development. MP Janaka Wakkumbara took oaths as State Minister of Export and Agriculture and MP Vidhra Vikramanayaka took oaths as State Minister of Agriculture. The MP Shehan Sema Singha was sworn in as State Minister of Development Banks and Loan Schemes while well, MP Kanaka Herath took oaths as State Minister of Ports Development. MP Dilum Amanugama took oaths as State Minister of Transport Services Management followed by MP Lohan Ratpatta as State Minister of Road Development. MP Vimala Veera Desanayaka then took oaths as State Minister of Wildlife Resources with MP Jayanta Samaravira taking oaths as State Minister of Environment. Lastly, MP Sanat Tishant Perera took oaths as State Minister of Fisheries and Freshwater Fishing Resources with MP Tarak Bal Surya taking his oaths as State Minister of Social Security. Three deputy ministers were also sworn in, namely MP Nimal Lanza as Deputy Minister of Community Empowerment and Estate Infrastructure, Kanchana Vijay Sekar as Deputy Minister of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources, and MP Indika Anuruddha as Deputy Minister of Public Management, Internal Affairs, Provincial Councils and Local Government. Palat Sabha Saha Palat Palana Niyoche Amatitu Manlisa. Speaking at the ceremony, President Gotabe Rajapaksa revealed that although his initial intentions were to reduce the number of cabinet, state and deputy ministers, 
a large number of such ministers was deemed necessary to take on the responsibilities outlined in the development plans of its election manifesto. विशाल वागकीम राष्ट्रक तिबेनो यहीं द तमाई मामा एक संपूर्ण राज्य साव उपाय मतिवरुण के संख्या वे या कारण में तबागा नट तेरने करे मामा वासर गाना वक्त इससे पशुगिया अध्ययने कर पु आवश्यकता वे अंधिया बैलों मात शेष इन में मतिवरुण व्यापारे तुलदी ये प्रदेश वाले टक यामा पिदकपु जनता वे आवश्� एवा इटुकर गनी म संधा मतामाई में राज्य माते दूर विशेष इन म सकस कल्ला तीन में का वारा प्रसाद या निवे में का वगदात वागकी म तमाई में आप ही हमें किनारे में जनता वाला बादी लती है ने में राज्य आंसे होंदे निलदारी निन्ना ये आये व दिरीमात कल्ला ये राज्य आंसे क्रियात्मक कीला जनता वटे सेवे कराने � Amati berikim, raja amati berikim, upaya amati berikim, menteri berunggin, mama, wisesan mila si tena. Daru angkai asli, perti cakti kerana pada tiada sah. Manusia kerja nasi paridi bawa bagi ni amat daya kerana kalsium, vitamin C sah, yakin ada nunggu, milo sama gini, potion enti diri ter. Well, in the backdrop of an ongoing tussle between divided factions within the United National Party, on their choice of opposition leader, Speaker of Parliament Karu Jayasuriya took to Twitter today to announce his choice, bringing about some closure on the issue. The Speaker announced uh, in upholding parliamentary traditions, UNP leader Ranil Wickremesinghe has been recognised as the opposition leader. The decision is seen as one that would widen the split between the two rival camps within the party. Speaker Karu Jayasuri last evening answered the current million dollar public question of who the country's next opposition leader would be. Taken to Twitter, the Speaker announced that he has recognized UMP leader Rani Vikramasinghe as the individual he considers the best choice to command the opposition in Parliament. His tweet read, recognition of the leader of the UNFGG as the leader of the opposition was done upholding established parliamentary traditions that should not be violated. While I empathize with the challenges too, it is best that a party's internal disputes are settled from within. The report comes as a surprise ahead of reported discussions which are to have been held yesterday between MP Sajid Premadasa and UMP leader Rani Vikramasinghe, which were cancelled at the 11th hour. Following numerous complaints being filed by many community organizations regarding acts of fraud, carried out by uh, during the tenor of the previous government, the Electricity Users Association today filed a complaint to the Bribery Commission for action to be taken against individuals allegedly involved in major losses at the Salon Electricity Board. A complaint was lodged with the Bribery Commission today by representatives of the Electricity Users Association. LNG Vidili Balagar, Viapruti, Triatmaka Nokri Matula, Rajet Ahimita Mudala, Billiana Tundas Tunzia Hata, Me Molakaru and Natara, Ravi Karnanaka, Hitabuagamati, Rani Victomasinga, Pascalingam, Etakota Malis Samaravikama, Sagal Ratnaika, Mangala Samaravida Saha, Toroturu Sapiana in Nangina Lekam, Batagoda, Itapi Illa Sitinoa, Niti Idri, Meaeta, Mepilban the Kriakar and the Gila. Nine army intelligence officers accused of the abduction of journalist Pragith Eknaligoda were served indictments by the Colombo High Court and released on previous bail today. The case was taken up before a three-judge bench comprising of Justices Sampat Abekon, Sampat Vijayaratna and Gihan Kulatunga. The court banned the defendants from foreign travel and ordered the impounding of their passports, if any, to the court within a week. The trial at bar also ordered the defendants to be fingerprinted and a report on it to be submitted to the court. Subsequently, the case was postponed to the 18th of December. Nine officials, including commanding officer of Giritale Army Camp, Lieutenant Colonel Shammi Kumar Ratna, have been named defendants of the case. The Attorney General served indictments on the defendants over the alleged murder and abduction of journalist Prakit Eknaligoda in January of 2010. The High Commissioner of India to Sri Lanka, Taranjit Singh Sindhu, delivering the Lalit Atulat Mudali commemoration freedom speech 
term the Sri Lankan presidential elections a festival of democracy and called for stronger cooperation in defense and national security to counter the threat of radical terrorism. The High Commissioner called the Sri Lanka-India relationship more than special and assured the government of all assistance whenever required. Let me take a moment to remember all those victims of terror attacks, not just in India, but also in Sri Lanka and worldwide. The recently concluded presidential elections were indeed a festival of democracy in which people spoke and spoke clearly. The decisive mandate given by the people of Sri Lanka is a reflection of the power of the people which is supreme in any democracy. National security and defense are like air. Without it, you cannot survive. But when you have it, you take it for granted. National security goes beyond physical securing of one's own borders. If the region and the world are in turmoil, you will agree with me, we cannot remain safe. The jihadi terror ideology is a threat not just to India or to Sri Lanka. It's a threat to the entire world. Let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. It is heartening to note that India and Sri Lanka have strong cooperation in the fields of defense and security. We have been sharing our equipment and expertise with Sri Lanka. We are also ready to do more. When I say you are special for us, I mean it in every sense. You can count on our support whenever you need us. And we are confident that Sri Lanka would respond with equal swiftness when we need help. Now, has the central bank as regulator taken any action regarding troubled the finance company? We'll find out after this break. Welcome back. We take you to business news now. Sri Lanka's central bank moved to deny reports that the finance company was in talks with three investors keen to acquire its banking license by injecting funds to review the firm. The central bank said in a statement that information published in newspapers and news websites yesterday regarding regulatory action taken by the central bank on the finance company PLC are not true or correct. Articles mentioned that the finance company had informed the Colombo Stock Exchange that it has been approached by three interested parties to consider investing in the company. But the central bank clarifies no such proposals have been submitted to the regulator so far. The finance company earlier this week said in a stock exchange filing that it had asked the central bank for more time to negotiate with investors after the regulator issued the cancellation notice. The troubled subprime lender said in a statement published in the media early this week that since publication of the notice of cancellation, TFC was approached by three interested parties to consider an investment on the basis the banking license could be obtained with sufficient investment. However, the central bank questions the credibility of the statement and denied any knowledge of the three investment proposals. Therefore, CBSL said it wished to clarify that the information published in the articles in newspapers and news websites regarding any potential investment is not true and not correct. The Central Bank of Sri Lanka last month said it had decided to cancel the license of the finance company from 23rd October 2019 after failing to find an investor to revive the troubled finance company with the aim of safeguarding the interests of depositors and other creditors. TFC has 27.7 billion rupees in deposits at the end of June 2019. Its loan book was 3.7 billion rupees and the firm had 10.8 billion rupees in assets to its liabilities of 30.9 billion rupees. NDB Investment Bank said it helped the Maldives Investment Bank raise 244.1 million Maldives rufiyah, equivalent to 15.8 million US dollars through an initial public offering. MIB issued 4.5 million new ordinary shares, raising 157.5 million rufiyah, while the majority shareholder, Islamic Corporation for the Development of the Private Sectors, sold down another 2.475 million for 86.6 million rufiyah. 
The sale was oversubscribed 1.5 times. Chief Corporate Advisory Officer of NDBIB, Nilendra Virasinghe, said in a statement that a record retail participation was seen attracting over 16,000 applications. CEO of NDBIB, Darshana Pereira, added that the bank looks forward to raising debt and equity capital to enable growth as a part of its strategy of regional play. Although the U.S. stock market continues a record-breaking rally that has sent the benchmark S&P 500 index up nearly 25% for the year, investors appear to be looking elsewhere for better values in the year ahead. World stock funds brought in $8.2 billion in investor inflows over the last two weeks, breaking a losing streak that dated back to early September. U.S. equity funds, meanwhile, lost more than $10 billion in outflows over the last two weeks, extending a retreat that has spanned seven of the last eight weeks. The move into overseas stocks comes as economic fundamentals appear to be improving in parts of Europe and Asia, while the United States' growth looks to be slowing, drawing money away from a market that had been an outperformer. Now here in Colombo, Colombo uh, Stock Exchange, uh, equities ended higher today, helped by gains in beverage and banking shares. The benchmark Colombo Stock Exchange ended up 0.39% at 6,118.87, further moving away from its lowest close since November 15th, hit on Monday. Analysts say that the government's policy announcements were expected to positively impact profitability at the Colombo Stock Exchange. Here's a look at how markets performed during the day. The market closed on a very positive uh, note today for the second straight session. Price gains in uh, John Kiss Holdings and Ceylon Tobacco. Uh, both turnover and volumes recorded a one week high uh, with uh, crossings made in dialogue uh, contributing about 34% to the day's turnover. A net foreign outflow was uh, witnessed uh, with high foreign participation for the uh, second straight session. Today there was some uh, special tax cuts given which will affect uh, stocks across the board. We saw uh, VAT being reduced uh, from 15% to 8%, then uh, NBT, debit tax, payee, withholding tax uh, completely being slashed, then the te telecommunication levy uh, cut down by about 25%. Uh, All this is going to have a major impact on the stock market with uh, significant impact on profitability of uh, counters. If you take uh, VAT and MBT, this is going to have a significant impact on uh, banking sector counters with them having a significant financial VAT component and also MBT component. We, we see that the uh, companies is profitability is going to be significantly impacted positively. In addition, we think that uh, consumer demand across the board will rise with disposable income uh, significantly increasing with the completely uh, slashing of uh, pay, debit tax and uh, also withholding tax. So there's going to be a significant increase in consumer demand and we are very positive on uh, all the uh, consumer related companies as well. This has a special impact on telecom companies, Dialog and SLT because the telecommunication levy has been uh, slashed by about uh, 25 percent. So across the board you will see uh, companies uh, profitability improving uh, significantly. In addition to that you will see revenues of companies also increasing not only because of the tax cuts but company revenues increasing because of the consumer demand significantly improving because consumers are going to have higher disposable income because of the tax cut. That wraps up tonight's edition of First at Nine on Other Therana 24. Thank you for watching. Good night.